When it comes to science fiction, there's nothing more iconic than holograms. So let's create one. Specifically, in a way that layers different holographic effects on top of each other, enabling us to combine them as we choose to achieve the look we want. Starting with the first layer, let's make the object transparent and at the same time highlight its edges. Here, the dot product between bevel and normal vectors is passed through the map range node to mathematically set apart edges from faces. The output of the map range node is handed over to the mix node to determine which of the two shaders, emission or transparent, should be applied to each part. As a result of all this, aside from the color on the emission node, another key parameter is the radius on the bevel node which allows us to adjust the thickness of the glowing edge lines, leaving the contrast of these lines to be determined by the parameters on the map range node. These nodes, put together, produce the first layer of our hologram effect. Also, a quick note to those who are new to Blender and wondering where all these nodes came from. You can find each and every one of them by typing the name of the node in the search field located at the top of the Add menu. For the second layer of the hologram effect, take the previous node tree and extend it with this new branch. This generates a Fresnel effect by adding an emissive glow to the side faces. Here, the emission node determines the color of the glow, while the parameters on the map range node let us adjust the view angle at which the glow becomes visible. With only a few shader nodes, we've already achieved a very decent hologram effect. You can already use this in any of your projects to instantly make them look like a scene out of a science fiction movie but we can push this node tree even further. The third and final layer of our hologram effect is in the form of scan lines, either horizontal or vertical, which help define the shape of the object in space. These scan lines appear the moment we connect this third branch to the previous node tree. Here, the emission node determines the color of the scan lines, but it's on the wave node that the scale value lets us set the frequency of the scan lines, while the distortion value allows us to add some randomness. Finally, the thickness and spacing of the scan lines is determined by the inputs on the map range node. Using these scan lines effectively, you can draw the viewer's attention to the hologram itself or to a special point of interest within the hologram. But if you really want to bring things to life, animate the scan lines by adding a driver to the phase input on the wave texture node. With this in place, the scan lines move along the object to conclude the third and final layer of our hologram effect. And as a bonus, to give the hologram its glowing quality, head over to the compositing workspace, select Use Nodes, enable Backdrop, and set up this node tree. Now render out the animation to see the final result in its imaginatively intricate holographic intrigue. This brings us to the end of this tutorial, which is where I show a snapshot of the entire node setup and point out the key parameters. Be sure to watch this next video to learn how to add a mysterious smoke effect to your scenes. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.